Dear God, that needs complete drag. Yeah, I guess I am the drag whale. Hello everyone, I'm Frida Wales, and today we're diving into the drag multiverse with our guests. This seven and a half foot tall anti-hero whose powers include saving everyone from a maniacal sex doll in Sado Psychiatrist, and withstanding the power of wearing infinity gauntlet cha-cha boots all day on cement. Breaking the fourth wall all the way into my tank, I'd like to welcome the one and only Drag Pool. Well, thank you, Frida. I didn't even know the whales had a representative. I'm so pleased to meet you. Should I squeak? Oh, oh, oh. That's the best I can do. I haven't talked whale in years. <laughs> I did my best uh, superhero whale impression for you. Oh, I love it. It's almost like you could fly. Some superheroes do wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a cape? It's the latest rage. <laughs> yeah, right, I should get one. But, you know, in the Deadpool universe, none of us pools have capes that I can think of. It's hard to pull the swords out, I guess, with a cape there. That's true. It's hard to do it anyway. They look very, very wonderful on your back. I mean, it's very superhero-y, but it's not real practical. They just don't come out very well. <laughs> it's, it'd be especially hard with my little hands. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're regenerating. <laughs> my superpower is that I'm Magneto, but I have tiny hands. <laughs> there you go. That way you can only use like paper clips. <laughs> right, just small metal things. That's right. <laughs> We're going to dive right into my first question. Uh, what drew you to Deadpool as a drag persona? Well, I had been doing cosplay and other kind of makeup and costumes for a few years and felt a little stuck. And then Deadpool 2 came out and Celine Dion had that Ashes video where uh, Yanis Marshall was in the background and, and in a Deadpool suit and like eight inch stiletto boots and was yep. dancing. And I thought, Dear God, that needs complete drag. And the whole thing just kind of came to me, like instead of a hood, do the makeup. Um, I'd never done any really kind of drag before. So it was just kind of like it, it was an epiphany. And from there, I, the character developed. I think I went to school with Epiphany. <gasps> oh my goodness. She was probably very intuitive. <laughs> very, yeah. So you, you've done quite a bit of cosplay before, but this is your first drag persona character. I don't know, quite a bit. Um, got started a little bit late. Um, I, when I was a teenager, I enjoyed everything Halloween and everything uh, makeup and special effects makeup and making my front porch into the you know, little haunt of the street. Um, but then, you know, I grew up and for some reason that disappeared. Not that it wasn't a part of me still, uh, but it took until I was much later um, that I said, you know what? Um, I'm a big nerd. I like going to conventions. Why don't you dress up like one of those people? Um, and so our first cosplay was uh, me and my husband was Rick Grimes and Zombie Shane. And so from there on, that's where it kind of took off. That's where we started doing uh, other costumes and I got a little bit more handy with the makeup and that sort of stuff. And you actually got to cosplay Rick Grimes for Rick Grimes, right? Yes, we've actually been hired, hired if you want to call it that. It's not like I'd make a living. Um, but we were uh, approached by um, the comic book company, the Image Comic Book that produces it, um, as well as AMC, who does the TV show. And we've done some promos for them. Um, we've done some other kinds of um, uh, in-person gigs. One of our favorites is I actually had the um, Greg Nicotero's art studio, his workshop, his FX workshop, come and turned us all into zombies. That's awesome. Um, and they had us walk around at E3, which is a big electronics convention, um, to promote a Walking Dead virtual video game. Awesome. I thought, oh, God, eight hours as a zombie. I can't speak. You can't do anything. It was a blast. I had one of my favorite characters. We kept zombies in our repertoire ever since then. That would be a lot of fun. So you just got to kind of like lurk around the place the whole time. Yeah, what, what you discover is when you don't have a voice, you have to create a character in other ways. And even though there were like 10 of us, we each had a different zombie character. You could actually figure us out. I got called the psychotic zombie, which I'm kind of proud of. <laughs> um, I still utilize that, what, the techniques I learned at that day and what I experimented with when I portray like creature work and stuff like that. Yeah, because you've also done a Demigorgon, right? A yes, the Demigorgon from Stranger Things. <sighs> Well, that was a labor of love, truly. I had never 
fabricated a costume like that by hand before. That was my first time ever constructing that, that costume. And so it was like, it took me over four months to just figure out the engineering. Like, how do I wear a big old thing on my head without it killing my neck and all this other kind of stuff. And I put sound in it and it has lights in it. And all of that was all brand new to me. Uh, I learned you have to use all of your body uh, to make that costume work. Can you tell us one of your first memories when you went out as drag pool for the first time? Ooh, yes, I can remember the very first time. We were at San Diego Comic-Con. I was going to debut it there. Um, and uh, we actually had been, uh, again, hired is a light word. We were invited <laughs> to be on a local talk show promoting um, Comic-Con. And so I had to get on a very early bus to get there. We had like a five o'clock call time in the morning. And so there was very few other people on the bus. But when I stepped off the bus to walk to the location at the filming, one of the security guards goes, I'm not supposed to do this, but can I have a picture with you? And I knew, <laughs> I knew in that moment, I have something here. Um, and from then on, folks just, I think, you know, the character of Deadpool is this cross between that kind of smarky, but also very protective of the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people are drawn to that. Um, and then, of course, when they see this kind of more gender variant version, um, then uh, folks who are uh, gender queer or gender creative or who are from the LGBT community, like, oh, we have our own. Um, and also it's a, a blast to like run into those folks um, when they, you know, they get kind of into that, this giddy inspired moment uh, when they, they get their own Deadpool. Well, and that kind of goes along with the whole Deadpool verse anyway, because he is kind of a queer character, right? He identifies as pansexual and, and he, you know, uh, flirts with everybody. I yeah. mean, that's kind of the nature of his character. Though, obviously, I get some trolls, not too many, uh, but I get some trolls, and they love to say, "You're ruining Deadpool." I said, "Oh, you mean the guy that uh, talks about sucking Wolverine's dick and grabs yeah. his ass? That guy?" Um, you know, it's like clearly you don't know the character <laughs> well almost, enough to be making. Almost like the, the Bugs Bunny of Marvel. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I should get those like horns and do opera. <laughs> yeah. If you happen to pick a, a DC Universe character, who do you think you would have gravitated towards? Ooh, that's an interesting question. I've never had that one before. Well, my my hubs is all into the Joker. So mm -hmm. um, if he's into the Joker, I'd probably have to take something from that realm. I don't want to say Catwoman, but then it wouldn't really be a, a crossover, would it? But um, <laughs> I, mean, it could be Catwoman. I have my own male version of uh, kind of my own drag version of Catwoman probably would be my choice. Uh, let's get right into some fun ones. Fuck, Mary kill, X-Men edition. Pick three Ooh. characters from the X-Men franchise that you'd want to either fuck, marry, or kill. <sighs> Boy. Well, I'd have to fuck Wolverine. I play with that in my videos anyway, so <laughs> I'm already up on that one. Um, Mary would have to be somebody who could actually form some ad additional degree of commitment. Oh, boy, out of the X-Men. Cyclops kind of an asshole, so I don't really, <laughs> I don't think I really want that one. Maybe Iceman. Iceman, yeah. He's cute, he's cute and he has a good heart he, with his uh, relationship with Rogue. He's a nice big rock. He's right? Right? Right, perfect. And who would I kill? Um, oh boy, maybe Jean Grey when she's all dark phoenixed out because she's pretty scary, but even though I like that power. <laughs> I actually, so it's funny, I did this whole look and then I looked and I'm like, I actually kind of look like dark green Jean Grey. You do. So that actually gets right into our next question. Which villain identity should I take over as a drag persona to battle you? Should I be drag or not, drag Nito or Jean Drag? Oh, we have to go with Jean Dreg. It does kind of um, fit. If you think about the the play between um, like the the regenerative properties that like Wolverine has, um, and because he can't be otherwise killed, uh, then the battle between a regenerative kind of ex mutant and a mutant with uh, the uh, Jean Grey character, uh, it would be quite a battle because you'd have such power and such strength, but you really couldn't kill me. So you have recently done some work with Disasterina on her episodes of uh, Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us about working with her? As a person, Disasterina, <laughs> Disasterina is very generous. I, I gotta tell you, we, we did sadopsychiatrist together. She invited me to do that. We actually met at a convention hmm. um, a, a couple of times and I was in character and she said, uh, this character is made for TV. Uh, and so later on, I got a script that said, we wrote you into the series. Um, would you mind doing it? I'm like, 
would I mind? <laughs> of course, I'll, I'll do it. Um, and there was a, that, I'm primarily in episode five, but I make an appearance in episode six. And there was a scene in ep episode six where I'm supposed to say, it's not a real superhero party without drag pool sweetness. And um, in rehearsal, I flubbed the line and I said, it's not a real superhero party without a real superhero. And she stopped the thing and said, uh, drag pool, you need to say your name. <laughs> and I said, at first I thought it was being like, corrected. And then I realized, she wants to make sure the audience knows who I am. And I thought, that's who Disasterina is. Disasterina is not only that incredible artist and all that kind of trash camp and horror camp that we appreciate, but um, the person um, in Disasterina really cares about the folks she works with. Can we expect to see you in season two of Sado Psychiatrist? Um, so far, I haven't been aware that they're announcing a season two yet. Um, and so I, I would hope so. Um, I haven't been approached about anything yet, but um, I do know from both uh, Ave Rose, who's Disaster Rina's wife, um, both of them have um, indicated they would like to continue to work together. Um, I recently was on one of uh, Disaster Rina's podcasts and yeah. she let me, let me write my own bit um, and all of that. So um, I, I feel confident that uh, if there is a season two, that um, hopefully I'll be written into it somewhere. Well, the nice thing is, is they can't kill you off as a character, so. That's right. I can at least peer through a window. And right, just, just make sure you're in this in the shooting area somewhere and just like pop in. <laughs> just see your beehive walk behind the set. Which of your 10 uh, nude ya yeah superhero resolutions have you kept up with from uh, Disaster Rina's Tasty Podcast? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, it only went up to six. <laughs> you only got to six? <laughs> yes, because. It originally wasn't supposed to be 21. Well, first it was supposed to be 21, but it gets messy after 10. <laughs> and then who am I kidding? Anything under six wasn't very fun. <laughs> so it went from 10 to six. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I've kept up with any, <laughs> I don't think I've kept up with any of them. Not a so, um, well, I, I don't uh, tuck when I'm in costume. So I guess in that case, one of them was being able to, uh, you know, be able to see if you're a shiny helmet or a red hood when you're wearing your spandex. <laughs> uh, so I, I suppose if people look close enough, they probably could. <laughs> Besides Dragpool, what's your favorite cosplay that you've ever done? Um, I have a special kind of place for the Rick Grimes cosplay solely because it was the first one. Um, and it, it got recognized by the creators of the actual show itself. Uh, and I really liked our spin on taking uh, Shane and turning him into a zombie pet. Mm -hmm. uh, my homage was to Michonne. Uh, you know, uh, she was my favorite character on the show. Um, so it was, uh, I didn't think I would make a very pretty Michonne. So, so I didn't, so I wouldn't insult the uh, beautiful Denai Guerrera. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we did something else. Um, so uh, that was my way of being able to tie her character into my character. Um, and it was the first cosplay I did together with my husband. So it has a special place in that it really was our characters in terms of uh, the formation in our relationship. Do you have any future plans for Dragpool once the world starts again? Well, as in, uh, you know, the as timing went today, I'm going to be doing a lot of filming. Yeah. So um, I've been on hiatus from my social media and some, from other activity. Uh, so I'm hoping this will be with now that I have a bunch of new material, I can resume those things and hopefully get the same act, uh, kind of same response, the same engagement. I know it's a little bit of a risk, but we'll see what happens. Um, and so I also have a, um, a chari charity event coming up. Our local Kiwanis Club, LGBT Kiwanis Club, um, is doing a fundraiser on the 20th. It's a drag virtual drag pool bingo. Um, and so drag pool will be leading the bingo charge. Those are the kind of some of the immediate things um, on the agenda. Because you're, you're primarily on TikTok. Is that where you're kind of mostly... Yeah, TikTok is where, I, where my social media took off. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first video that I, I put on there was a little bit that uh, somebody took of me at a con. I saw that. And <laughs> that's, where I, that's where I first met you. <laughs> that very first one was heading towards a million views. And then TikTok said it violated community guidelines. Um, apparently, because it had a severed Thanos head in a bag, um, <laughs> that was too bloody. I'm thinking, I wrote back and said, you realize this isn't even a real person. This is a character. I did then repost it later on, edited, uh, where I put a picture over it. And then I noticed other people were 
um, just putting like a warning, uh, like a, a caution that it's not real uh, on their videos. And so I did, the third time I posted it, um, I did that. And that's do, been doing really well. The, the second and third, both of them had done really well. Um, not as well as that very, very first one though. That very first one where it was like, that would have been my more than viral moment, but. Before we go, do you have any messages for your fans to, as we continue to make it through this pandemic? Oh boy, hang in there. Um, I know, especially for my LGBT followers, um, I, I'm a mental health professional by real trade. This is my, my hobby trade. Um, and uh, we hear a lot from them that because a lot of the lockdown is at home and oftentimes, you know, as a marginalized group, we're one of the few are marginalized groups that we get marginalized at home. And so uh, youth in particular who have no other options um, are now having to lock down with parents and family who don't readily accept them. And um, school used to be an outlet. It was a safe haven. They could meet friends or at least there may be a gay straight alliance available to them or they could at least hang out somewhere other than home. Um, and now they don't have that option as much. Yeah. So I realize a lot of them are struggling. So I wanna tell them, you know, uh, hang, hang in there the best that you can. Um, still find your tribe, um, even if that's online. Um, things are opening up a, a little bit more so, and people are getting vaccinations. So hopefully you'll get a little bit more of an opportunity to be able to start that in-person support again. But um, uh, you have my heart. <laughs> and then our last request, uh, you've already kind of touched on it at the beginning of it, but I'd love it if you could do your best whale call for me. Oh, well, maybe I should have had some water. <laughs> Salt water's <laughs> best. Uh, yes, right. It sounds that sounded more wolf like. Little wolfy. But, you know. There we go. Now we're getting into the that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. That's the best I can do. That's a that's a, a regenerating whale. Before we let you go, where can everyone find you online? Well, as we were just talking, um, on my TikTok is the only drag pool. Yep. Um, I just opened my Twitter, which is also the only drag pool. Mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, you can find me on at drag pool or at my, my full account where I do all of my makeup and other work. And that's the underscore real R-E-E-L underscore guy, G-U-I, the real guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Facebook, we're real guys, R-E-R-E-E-L-G-U-I-S-E, -E -E -E, two separate words, real guys. Thanks, Dragpool, for stopping by and hope you had a nice swim with us today. Oh my God, the water was so warm. I just peed Thank you for the floaties. <laughs> I didn't hear that part. I said, sorry, I peed in it. <laughs> oh, actually, I think that's kind of kinky. <laughs> no wonder I was just feeling so like a toilet. No, <laughs> just kidding. Well, toodles, it was a joy. I'm glad I didn't have to actually take on any villains today. <laughs> Maybe next time, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks there you go. <laughs> Adios. Bye. Chimichanga. <laughs>